A biology class at Central High School predicted that a local population of animals will double in size every 12 years. The population at the beginning of 2014 was estimated to be 50 animals. If P represents the population n years after 2014, then which of the following equations represents the class's model of the population over time? Two ways to do this. I haven't done much of the plugging in in previous questions because it hasn't either worked at all or really been very useful. But here's a question where I think plugging in can really help you. If you don't know the formula for exponential growth and how to set that up, I think plugging in really will be helpful here. Right? So if this thing doubles in size every 12 years, 12 years after 2014, since they're starting at 50 animals, you're going to have 100 animals after that 12 year period. So what we can do is let's plug in n equals 12 into our equations here, and we better get 100. And if we do, we got our answer. If we don't, we can get rid of it. So first one uh, looks absolutely ridiculous. 50 times 12 is 600 plus 12 is 612. Way too big. 12 times 12 is 144 plus 50 is 194. No good. This, I'm not going to be able to do my head, but it's probably going to be massive, right? It's 2 to the 144 power. I don't even think my calculator can handle that. So that's gone. So the only one here that might work is D. Let's test that out just to double check. So it's 2 to the 12 divided by 12. That's 2 to the 1. And then 50 times 2 to the 1. Don't even need my calculator. 50 times 2 to the 1 is the same thing as 50 times 2, which is 100, and that's the answer. That's one way to do it. You also could do the more official way to do the question, which is set up your exponential. So we're going to do uh, our exponential equation is generally the population or the quantity of whatever it is you're looking at is equal to the initial population times the growth, which we'll talk about in a second, to the time over, we'll call this B. Now, this thing right here is 1 plus the rate of growth. That's often how you see it. In this case, since it's doubling every 12 years, it's basically 100% growth. So it's 1 plus 1.00, oh, which is 2. You can also just see this as we're doubling every 12 years. So we're going to multiply the population that we have by 2 for every period of time. This t, of course, is the number of years. Let's actually change that to n since we're using n in this case. But you'll often see it as t because t for time. Now, this B is the doubling period. It's the amount of time it takes for this thing to double. So in this case, it's going to be over 12. Because it's going to take 12 years to double. And we see how that makes sense, right? When we have 12 years for N, 12 over 12 gave us 1. So this thing just doubles once, as it should. Uh, and then we're going to times this by 50 because that's our initial population. So we get this, which again is choice E. And it's reasonable to do it that way. I think it's much easier to plug in. You don't have to deal with setting up the equation. Just plug in, see which one uh, gets you the answer, and you're all set. Exponential growth was something you would see on the old SAT occasionally, but you pretty much never had to set up your own equation on the old SAT. In this case, you do. You have to set up your own exponential growth. But as you saw in the first part of this video, plugging in short circuits that entire approach. I haven't used plugging in, as I said in the video, or other strategies that we might have used on the old SAT on the problems presented for multiple reasons, mostly because it wasn't really applicable, uh, but also just because sometimes it's easier to do it the more direct way. In this case, using a strategy can really help. And I think what this shows us is as we see more questions and as we get a better idea of the typical kind of question you'll see on the SAT, we'll be able to either adopt old SAT strategies like plugging in, which we did in this case, to the new SAT, or and or create new strategies and tactics for the new SAT that will help us do questions in other ways beyond the traditional party line math class way, which is how most of the time, you know, teachers and the SAT will show you how to do it. Of course, we want to know how to do that. So understanding this particular method, you know, where you have to set up the equation, you know, it's nice to know, especially if you're going for a high score. But having that backup or even the primary method of doing it with plugging in, I think can really facilitate a lot of these questions for you. So as you're going to see when we work through these videos and videos in the future, we are going to be generating and recovering strategies uh, that you can use beyond just doing it the math class way.